The top stories tonight and why news. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso announces his presidential bid in the 2022 elections. The House minority pushes for special appropriations for the government's COVID-19 response. 24 schools nominated for the pilot limited face-to-face -face classes have so far met the guidelines of the Department of Education and the Health Department. Philippine health experts say that COVID-19 breakthrough infections in the country are caused by the Delta variant and not because of vaccine brands. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau re-elected for a third term. Sensational K-pop group BTS performed and delivered remarks at the 2021 United Nations General Assembly. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Quezon City. Today is Tuesday, September 21, 2021. I'm Herlene Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Thiel. First in the news, Manila City Mayor Isco Moreno Dumagoso's camp announced today that he will be running for president in the 2022 national elections. This was confirmed by Manila Public Information Office Chief Julius Leonen. The Manila PIO chief also said that former senatorial candidate Willie Ong will be Mayor Isco's running mate. Moreno had previously said that he would announce his plans for the elections after confirming that he had a meeting with Vice President Lani Robredo and Senator Manny Pacquiao. Mayor Isco is the president of Action Democratico Political Party. The word war between President Rodrigo Duterte and Senator Richard Gordon is seemingly far from over as the senator hits back anew at the president in the 8th Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing today. After he was once again lambasted by the president in his public address last night, Gordon calls the president a bully, saying that he is not afraid of the chief executive. He also recalled the times when cabinet members who were tasked to lead the government's COVID-19 response asked for help from the Philippine Red Cross, where he sits as the chairman. You're a bully. And I'm sorry, Mr. President. The Filipino people can fight back against bullies. Filipino can have a revolution against bullies. Quite frankly, Mr. President, you are boring. Di ako nagtatakot sa inyo. Di po ako duwag. Do your worst, Mr. President, as you did with ABS-CBN. But I'm not going to waste my time with you, Mr. President, because you are no longer respectable. Meanwhile, formerly Pharmaceutical Corporation Director Lincoln Ong is now under the custody of the Senate. Ong was previously cited in contempt for being evasive to the senator's queries. He will be detained in the Senate building in Pasay City. During the eighth hearing, several questions were asked by the senators, including the thousands of BGI test kits that were wasted. Senator Francis Pangilinan said they were bought from formally by the Department of Health through the procurement service of the Department of Budget and Management. The DOH confirms that over 7,000 test kits that are capable of nearly 380,000 tests had expired. Pangilinan estimates it costs over 500 million pesos. The senator pointed out that the procured test kits had a shelf life of six months, which is shorter than the preferred specification of 24 to 36 months. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III explains that it was the manufacturers themselves who said that COVID-19 test kits have only six months of shelf life. Bakit natin binili ng 6 months expiry tapos hindi nagamit, nag-expire? So yung ginastos natin, hindi natin nagamit para tayong nagsusunog ng pera sa gitna ng napakaraming namamatay. Ayaw naman namin bumili 
pagka hindi na siya angkop doon sa amin mismong requirement. The problem is, yung uh, availability at saka yung kanilang communication sa amin na six months lang talaga, hindi pa nila ma- maasabi yung stability nito, yung studies, and uh, these test kits were only developed in the early months of 2020. But Pangilinan still questioned why the government did not renegotiate the 25% discount that can be availed for near expiry test kits, which could have saved the government 1.2 billion pesos. Meanwhile, formerly Corporate Secretary and Treasurer Mohit Dargani denies he worked for the government. This was after Senator Risa Honteveros bared a screenshot of Dargani's LinkedIn account indicating that he was the special assistant of the Office of the Presidential Economic Advisor, which was headed before by businessman Michael Young. I tried to apply for there and it was um, temporarily. I assumed that I was working there, but apparently I was not. So I took that down eventually, actually. <laughs> but uh, that was up for some time. So it's either nagtrabaho nga kayo sa gobyerno and you didn't tell us the truth nung una kong tinanong, um, or you are misrepresenting no, yourself here in this no LinkedIn post. Um, no po, I did not uh, really work. I, did, I never worked for the government. The next Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing will be held on Friday, September 24. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives started its plenary debates on the proposed 5.024 trillion peso budget for the year 2022. The minority group wants to push for special appropriations for the government's COVID-19 response. Nel Maribohok will tell us why live. Yes, uh, Nel, good evening. Go ahead. Deputy Minority Leader in Marikina City, 2nd District Representative Stella Luskin, believed that the 2022 proposed budget is not a COVID-19 budget. The lawmaker said, and benefits for healthcare workers. Walang budget para sa medicine kits, para sa COVID patients, naka home care. Walang budget para sa SRA ng frontliners. Walang budget sa bakuna. Wala rin budget para sa contact tracing, hindi rin maliwanag kung sapat ang ayuda. According to Representative Kimbo, the Department of Health has allotted 48 billion pesos for COVID-19 response, but it does not include... 45 billion pesos for boost of 536.4 billion pesos in two. She said it's time to push for the special appropriation year's budget is not possible. Kung hindi kayang ma-accommodate ang necessary amendment sa GAP 2022, sana ay maging bukas ang ating economic managers to support a special appropriation under, for example, a Bayanian tree. Meanwhile, I'll buy Representative Joey Salceda, Vice Chairperson of the House Appropriations Committee, who sponsored the budget, is open to amend the proposed budget. So, obviously, the budget was crafted without the bigger wave, which is now uh, emerging. And therefore, considering the what you can call the residual in impact as this as the logarithmic law, so to speak, uh, in, evolves throughout the rest of the year and spilling into 2022, there is a need to recast essentially the health response budget. Duterte administration has allocated more than 395 billion pesos for COVID-19 response and infrastructure investments. Will? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Nel Maribohok reporting live. The Commission on Elections on Sunday said COVID-19 positive individuals and those who are under isolation will not be allowed to vote in the May 9, 2022 elections. But an election lawyer suggests that rules should be ironed out, particularly declarations of lockdown. Ray Pelayo reports why. 
Commission on Elections spokesperson James Jimenez clarified that they never entertained the idea of allowing COVID-19 patients into polling precincts. He also stressed that alternative means of voting such as online or via SMS are not permitted under Philippine law. But the palace spokesperson Harry Roque floated today the idea of resetting the elections in areas under lockdown. Kung sila po'y naka-lockdown, i-reset lang ng COMELEC ang uh, petsa ng butuhan. Kung meron pa mga areas under lockdown pagdating po ng 2022. Meanwhile, election lawyer attorney George Erwin Garcia said that there are certain circumstances in which failure of election may be declared. Under the Omnibus Election Code, there should be terrorism, violence, fraud, force majeure and the likes. Yung, yung COVID-19 hindi siya force majeure. Pag sinayang force majeure, act of God. Hindi mo inaasahan. Biglang naplatan na sasakyan mo, hindi mo inaasahan. Di ba? Pero kung ina-expect mo na lang, kita mo na lang, hindi yung force majeure. And therefore, hindi maja-justify yung failure of election. Attorney Garcia also suggests that COMELEC and government agencies should carefully study the rules in declaring lockdowns because it might be abused especially during the election period. Eh kasi kung yung isang barangay, kalaban ko lahat dyan, gagawa ako ng paraan, with all due respect, na hindi makaboto ang mga botante dyan sa, sa, sa barangay na yan. Ilalockdown na lang yan, gagawa ng paraan. May tatlo kasi nag-positive dyan, ilockdown yan, walang makakalabas. But Jimenez stressed, granular lockdown concepts should not be used to prevent voting or to force a failure of elections. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. A bill seeking to move the deadline of voter registration to October 31 has reached the Senate plenary Tuesday. Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri sponsored Senate Bill 2408 that would extend voter registration for one more month instead of the deadline of September 30. The House of Representatives has adopted a resolution urging the Commission on Elections to extend the deadline for voter registration in the country and abroad to prevent voter disenfranchisement amid the coronavirus pandemic. During Monday's plenary session, the House of Representatives adopted House Resolution 2231, which calls for the extension of the deadline in view of the health and safety measures and travel restrictions adopted to prevent the spread of COVID-19. But the Commission on Elections has not amended its position not to extend the deadline. 24 out of 638 schools nominated for the pilot face-to-face -face classes have so far met the guidelines of the Department of Education and the Health Department. Meanwhile, DepEd says they will finish finalizing the list of participating schools until Friday. Janice Inhente tells us why. The Department of Education is now in the execution and revalidation phase of schools participating in the pilot face-to-face -face classes in areas with low risk of COVID-19 infection. Revalidation includes checking of the school's readiness in implementing health and safety standard protocols. From the 638 schools, na pagka isinalang sa evaluation ng COVID risk category ay pumapasok sa minimal, laging mahigit na isang daan. Uh, pero yesterday, among the approval of the president, nagpa-generate kami doon sa kung ilan yung papasok ay eh, 24 uh, schools lamang. According to DepEd Undersecretary Nipomoseno Malaluan, they will try to finish on Friday the revalidation of schools. We need to have the revalidation uh, to see if the change conditions uh, at saka nga mga enhancements ay makomply. By Friday, we expect the revalidation to already be completed. Meanwhile, the Coordinating Council of Private Educational Association of the Philippines or COCOPEA is still waiting for DepEd's advice as to which member schools are qualified to open for limited in-person classes. Sa ngayon po ay uh, kami ay uh, humingi na ng uh, formal na po kaming humingi ng kopya ng guidelines from the Department of Education at yung pong uh, 20 na private schools na naaprubahan, hinihingi rin po namin ng detalyo nun para mapag-aralan po namin at kung sakali ay kami ay makapagbigay din ng mga konting uh, suggestions para lalong uh, mapagtibay yung ating uh, kahandaan. Some local government units in different provinces are hoping that they will be included in the dry run. 
while DepEd has confirmed that Metro Manila is not eligible to participate because COVID-19 cases in nation's capital remain high. Lalo na ngayong uh, panahon itong Delta variant na nag-increase uh, yung ating uh, mga COVID cases ay uh, wala sa MCR na pumapasok dun sa uh, minimal health risk na category. DepEd assures that the in-person classes will begin immediately once the list of qualified participating schools is completed. Janice Enhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Vaccine experts panel member and infectious disease expert Dr. Ron Jean Solanta said that it will be too risky for unvaccinated children to attend face-to-face -face classes. Aiko Miguel tells us why. Delta variant remains to be a threat to everyone's health, including the pediatric population. That is why vaccine experts panel member Dr. Rodjin Solante said the government should vaccinate first the children before the pilot run of face-to-face -face classes begin. We will only allow face-to-face uh, -face as long as those who will be on the face-to-face -face meeting will be vaccinated. So that's the priority. And uh, unless uh, this uh, age group, no, like for example, it's among high school, or elementary, na wala pang bakuna, uh, that's so risky putting them uh, in this uh, uh, in their classes na wala mga bakuna. Dr. Solante said it would be efficient to prioritize the rollout of pediatric vaccination in areas where face-to-face -face classes will initially be held. With the extension of the age group na meron ng bakuna na effective, then uh, this age group can also be a potential priority population once we have the capacity or the, the supply of these vaccines, if you have vaccines that will also cater to the younger age group, especially for, for us who are uh, planning, no? ang gobyerno kasi natin is planning to have a face-to-face -face, uh, mga school uh, opening. No? Dr. Solante adds, while Delta variant reduces COVID-19 vaccines' efficacy, it still prevents severe and critical infection compared to those who have not received their COVID-19 shots. Those vaccinated will only develop a more milder symptoms now compared to an unvaccinated. And in fact, in the current data now in some hospitals, still the unvaccinated that are suffering from severe critical compared to vaccinated. Hindi lang pala matanda pag severe critical. When you have this uh, kind of uh, highly transmissible uh, virus, it can also cause more hospitalization and emergency care visit, particularly those uh, mga medyo bata-bata uh, pa. No? The Department of Health is yet to finalize protocols on the pediatric vaccination rollout. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Our private school association is asking the government for subsidy. This as other private institutions are on critical state due to low turnout of enrollees this year. From the data of the Department of Education, only about 1.99 million students have enrolled in private school this year. This is far from the accord this is far according to the 3.37 million enrollees in 2020. Coordinating Council of Private Educational Associations, or COCOPEA, said with this number, some members are in the verge of closing down due to losses. Kaya po, kami po ay, um, again, uh, we, we request and we, we pray for uh, government intervention, economic intervention. Baka po meron tayong uh, pwedeng maibigay na subsidia diretso na po sa ating mga estudyante diretso na po sa ating mga teachers para po um, makapa, makatulong din po ito sa continuity of delivery of education. Philippine experts say breakthrough infections in the country are not because of vaccine brand. Rosa Licos will tell us why. Experts reiterate that all vaccines approved in the Philippines provide high degree of protection against getting seriously ill and dying from COVID-19. According to infectious disease expert Dr. Edsel Salvania, the more transmissible coronavirus Delta variant is the main reason of infection progression in the country. So the bottom line is, po, ngayon, 
Kaya po bumababa, dumadami po yung ating breakthrough infection ay dahil sa Delta. Hindi po dahil nag wane yung immunity or hindi na gumagana yung vaccines. Dahil po ito sa Delta. Pero nananatili po na mataas na mataas yung effectiveness ng lahat ng vaccines natin against severe disease, against hospitalization, and against death. Meanwhile, Biological Sciences Professor and Okta Research Fellow Nicanor Ostriaco supports Salvania's claim. He also said that even in Davao City, where in majority of vaccines deployed are Sinovac, the efficacy rate of the shots remains very high. All we can say is that the given mix, the current mix of vaccines that have been deployed in Davao are effective. And most of them are Sinovac. We just don't know exactly how much. Recently, Davao City government has informed the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases about the low acceptability of Sinopharm and Sinovac vaccines. This has become a huge challenge in the vaccination rollout. Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio even proposed to the IATF to buy more Western-made vaccines. But according to the palace, this is impossible as of the moment due to global vaccine supply problem. Rosa Lecoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines today logged 16,361 new COVID-19 cases, pushing the nationwide tally of confirmed cases to 2,401,916 2 in its bulletin. The Department of Health, or GOH, said the latest tally pushed the country's active cases to 171,142. Of the active cases, 92.4% are mild, 2.8% are asymptomatic. 2.69% are moderate, 1.4% are severe, 0.6% are in critical condition. Meanwhile, total recoveries rose to 2,193,700 after 21,974 more patients recovered from the viral disease. Deaths related to COVID-19 climbed to 37,074 with 140 new fatalities. The DOH noted that four laboratories failed to submit data on time. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has reached to 229 million. 132,907, while the deaths have surged to 4,701,332, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is the worst-hit country, with the number of cases and deaths at 42,290,027 and 676,092. 676,092, respectively, according to the CSSE. In terms of infections, India follows with 33,504,534 cases and 445,385 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes second with 590,855 fatalities and 21,247,667 confirmed cases. Local government units in Metro Manila have been registering minors for COVID-19 vaccination. But the Metro Manila Council awaits the Health Department's guidelines in the COVID-19 vaccination of minors. Astra Kadapan Jr. tells us why, live. Yes, Astra, go ahead. There go some local government units in Metro Manila prioritize students in the registration for COVID-19 vaccination of minors aged 12 to 17 years old. The Venezuela city government, for instance, targets to only register for now students in the 6th to the 12th grade on the same age group. In Marikina City, Mayor Marcelino Teodoro says they are looking to initially vaccinate eligible students ahead of other minors. Uh, uunahin natin mabakunahan ay yung mga kabataang nag-aaral ngayon uh, sa senior high school uh, pababa, ano, pababa ang antas. Uh, para sa ganun, kung magbukas man ng klase na at magsimula na face-to-face, ay nabakunahan na yung ating mga, mga kabataang uh, mag-aaral. The Department of Health, on the other hand, explains that more adult citizens need to be vaccinated first as they are more vulnerable to severe infection of the disease. Metropolitan Manila Development Authority Chairman Benhar Abalos Jr., however, clarifies that no consensus 
or no consensus was made by the Metro Manila Council regarding the prioritization of students in the vaccination of minors. Uh, as far as I know, it will be the DOH, you know, mm -hmm. uh, who would prioritize this since uh, they are the lead, you know. It should be, of course, part of the policy will be DOH or possibly IATF. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it will depend on one thing, uh, the availability of vaccines that's very important. The National Task Force Against COVID-19 on their part confirms that the country has received a big box of vaccine supply so far in September and are expecting about 10 million doses more before the month ends. Meanwhile, in an interview, NTF spokesperson retired General Restituto Padilla confirms that the NTF are preparing for adopting the implementation of booster shots for next year. Well, in, in as far as uh, vaccines are concerned, Michael, yes, naibigay na po natin yung ating mga inputs, naibigay na po at submit na po ni Secretary Calves lahat ng requirements para sa mga booster shots, lalo na para sa susunod na taon. And that's the latest on my end for tonight. Back to you, Diego. Thank you, Asher Kalapan Jr. for that live report. In other news, protest actions mark the commemoration of the 49th anniversary of martial law. The, the Manila Police District considers the mass actions conducted by several militant groups in Manila City today as peaceful. This despite the scuffle of protesters and police at Biliwasan Bonifacio. Dante Amento reports why. Over 600 progressive labor groups members joined the protest rally at the Liwasan Bonifacio in Manila City today. This is as the country marks the 49th anniversary of the declaration of martial law by former President Ferdinand Marcos. The program that lasted for two hours was generally peaceful according to the Manila Police District. However, authorities admit that the physical distancing of participants were not followed as promised by the organizers. Napag-usapan po namin ng mga organizer na isasagawa nila ito sa mga payapang paraan, wala silang sisirain, wala silang pipinsalain, at i-observe nila yung minimum health protocol ng mga magpa-participate. Dapat po nakasot ng face mask at face shield at dapat silang mag-social distancing. Pero nung bandang huli po, medyo nakita natin na nagkumpul-kumpulan na talaga sila, mahirap po talaga silang sawayin. A group of protesters also tried to join the rally at the Liwasan Bonifacio but was later barred by the police. MPD Director Police Brigadier General Leo Francisco clarifies, marches are prohibited in NCR which is currently under alert level 4. During the rally, protesters criticized the Duterte administration's failure on the COVID-19 response and the benefits of health workers among others. They also likened the present government to the Marcos regime. Pinakontrol ni Marcos sa militar ang gobyerno ng martial law. Pinakontrol ni Duterte ang gobyerno sa militar ngayong panahon niya. Kaya napakaraming aktivista at mga oposisyon ang kinulong, hinuli at pinatay sa ilalim ni Marcos at ni Duterte. The group's call is to oust President Duterte and make accountable all allegedly corrupt government officials. They also strongly oppose the possible Marcos-Duterte tandem in the 2022 elections. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad. The early call for an election gave the Liberal Party something to celebrate as Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau secured his third re-election win, forcing Conservative leader to accept defeat. Cherise Longbowen will tell us why. Cherise, good evening. Good evening, Marielle. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's followers proved that the Liberal Party remains ahead of this race. PM Trudeau clings onto power for yet another term as he remains seated as Canada's Prime Minister and the Liberal forming the minority of government. 
the liberal leader called for the early election to decide on the country's best leader as Canada suffers from a worsening fourth wave of COVID-19. During the election, the voters showed an unexpected favor to the Conservative Party's leader, Erin O'Toole, contrary to Trudeau's expectations resulting in a neck-and-neck -neck battle between the Liberals and Conservatives. On the other hand, O'Toole conceded defeat, admitting Trudeau had clearly won the authority to govern the country through the pandemic. On his Facebook page, Trudeau expressed his gratitude to fellow Canadians. The 36-day campaign, which ended on the 20th of September Canadian time, allowed around 27 million Canadians to cast their ballots. A significant number were sent as mail-in ballots due to the pandemic, which affected how fast the election results were finalized, but offered a systematic alternative during the restrictions. It is estimated that the mail-in ballot counts will be in tomorrow. Marielle? Thank you, Cherise Longbowen, for that live report. Around 5,000 people have been evacuated from Spain's La Palma Island after the eruption of the Cumbre Vieja volcano. Queenie Rivera details why, live. Yes, Queenie, please go ahead. Marielle, the Spanish volcano continues to expel molten lava and ash since its eruption on Sunday. Officials warn that it is most likely to do so for the coming days. Among the thousands who have been evacuated, 400 were tourists who were taken to a hotel on the nearby islands of Tenerife. President of the Canary Islands, Angel Victor Torres, said that no injuries or deaths have been reported so far. According to the local officials, houses have been damaged by the Eruption and at least one highway has been cut by flowing lava. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said on a Twitter post that they are in contact with Spanish authorities to offer additional aid for the people of La Palma. Meanwhile, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez has stayed on La Palma after rushing on Sunday to assess the damage on the island. Marielle? Queenie, has there been any unusual seismic activity prior to its recent eruption, knowing that uh, it has been silent for a while? Marielle, the last major eruption from the Cumbre Vieja volcano was 50 years ago. Although it occasionally convulsed and rumbled, it has not expelled lava until last Sunday. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you. Queenie Rivera reporting live. Recent report from Australian Koala Foundation showed a staggering 30% decline of the country's koala's population in three years. Australia was once a dwelling to 8 million marsupials. Now there might be solely around 30,000 remaining. The alarming data revealed the largest drop-off with an estimated 41% plummet of koala's population in seven areas since 2018, which counts roughly between 32,000 and 58,000 koalas left in the wild from 46,000 to 82,000 three years in the past. Australian Koala Foundation Chair Deborah Tabert was shocked to learn that koala's population have dwindled in 47 of a total electorate areas in the country and only two regions damaged down the numbers, namely Maya south of Adelaide and Congremite still having more than 5,000 koalas. This drastic decrease in inland population is directed to political stripes, drought, heat waves and diminishing habitat. It is imperative that every federal politician in each electorate should find ways to protect not only koalas but the habitat that remains to save this country's national animal from extinction, Tabert's added. South Korea's most popular pop group, BTS, attended the 76th United Nations General Assembly, or UNGA, alongside South Korean President Moon Jae-in at the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDG Moment 2021, in New York City that started September 14 to September 21. Jemri Lombes, or Jemri Lombos, will tell us why. 
BTS has long been supporting the United Nations' advocacy for humanitarian aid campaign across the world, and the K-pop sensation once again set themselves on the global stage at the 2021 UN General Assembly alongside South Korean President Moon Jae-in. The septet group performed and delivered remarks online after moons in this annual meeting of leaders from 193 members and stakeholders. They represent Korea's special envoy for future generations and culture. The K-pop group's recent tweet hinted that their speech will be about UN Sustainable Development Goals for Fighting Poverty and Hunger, Climate Crisis and Gender Equality, which was streamed via social media platforms. During the address, they also mentioned the importance of getting vaccinated. Although the UN event regularly sees the biggest names from all over the world, BTS participation surely caused a hype and huge internet traffic, as foreseen from their previous visit to the General Assembly. Hence, the UN highlighted BTS' role in the hybrid GA and how necessary preparation was done by the ID team to deal with struggles in the system. In this year's agenda, the SDG moment will emphasize on the coronavirus pandemic recovery efforts and help reinforce the 2030 agenda for sustainable development in the years ahead. Jenny Lombos, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Latoza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. And before we close, we will leave you with a final word, giving glory to God. From the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 8, it says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And those are the reasons behind the news, September 21, 2021. I'm Hergin Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Dumadami po yung ating breakthrough infections ay dahil sa Delta. Hindi po dahil nag-wain yung immunity or hindi na gumagana yung vaccines. Kung sila po'y naka-lockdown, i-reset lang ng COMELEC ang uh, petsa ng butuhan kung meron pa mga areas under lockdown pagdating po ng 2022. So obviously, the budget was crafted without the bigger wave which is now uh, emerging. And therefore, considering the what you can call the residual in impact as this as the logarithmic law, so to speak, uh, in, evolves throughout the rest of the year and spilling into 2022, there is a need to recast essentially the health response budget. You are a bully. And I'm sorry, Mr. President. The Filipino people can fight back against bullies. Filipino can have a revolution against bullies. Quite frankly, Mr. President, you are boring. Hindi ako nagtatakot sa inyo. Hindi po ako duwag. <laughs>